Yes, sir. Thank you. So if I'm having this is a nervous tissue or neuron on nerve cells, okay, and you know that it is the main uh called nervous nervous tissue, okay. Like we have nervous system, nervous system. Let me explain you what is nervous system. Nervous system, okay. Nervous system consists of mainly brain and spinal cord. Brain, spinal cord, spinal cord, and the the neurons neurons okay okay it is called neuron okay now you understood nervous system okay. consists of spinal cord neuron yes, okay sir. so we have in our syllabus that is the this this will going to study in the 10th class so this is neuron here we're going to study this one so what actually neuron is neuron is a, a basic or we can say that functional unit of nervous system what is neuron it is it is the functional functional unit of unit of nervous nervous system okay it is a functional unit of nervous system so please note it down and and draw this diagram let you draw this diagram then i'm going to explain you about this one okay Done. done okay so let's talk about this nervous system uh about this tissue tissue you know that uh this this is uh consisting of three parts I mean, this nervous tissue consists of three parts and if i talk about this one this is it is containing three parts okay the first part is called the cell body this portion is called the cell body this portion is called the exon and this portion is called the synaptic terminus or nerve ending okay what we call it nerve nerve ending okay nerve ending and actually these neurons nerve ending okay these neurons have some specialized character that may explain you that they are just wire like in shape and uh, they need to uh, carry the impulse from one portion, one uh, uh, part of the body or one part of the uh, sense organ to the another. Okay, so what does it do actually? It it carry the impulse. So near nervous tissue, nervous tissue, tissue carries impulse, carries impulse, impulse from 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 sense organs. Sense organs maybe from sense organ organ to to where to brain or spinal cord brain or spinal cord okay and sense organ can be brain or spinal cord okay they used to carry the impulse from from sense organ to brain or spinal cord okay and they are fixed in number and it also carries the it also carries the message from brain or spinal cord to the factor to the muscle. For example, if you touch a hot plate, okay, so that skin will will uh, uh, check the temperature or will receive the temperature that it is hot. Then it will send the impulse to the brain or spinal cord, okay, and then spinal cord again send the message to the muscles to remove your hand. 
and this process is very very fast okay so we called it uh, that that nervous cells or nervous tissue neurons carry the impulse from brain or spinal cord okay got it you understood that it take the message from sense organ to the brain or spinal cord and it and vice versa it also carry the message from uh, brain to the factors okay so if i talk it it also it also carries message or signals signals from from a spinal cord from a spinal cord or brain or brain to muscles muscles because it it's not going to carry them again to the uh, sense organ it will take uh, carry them as uh, simple uh, signals to the muscles okay okay you understood got it then next yes sir okay the next one is that the neurons are fixed in number it means uh, the numbers the, this is the only cell in the body that never divides it the number of this uh, neurons remain constant and we can say that it is the longest cell of approximately 1 meter length so it is it is the longest cell of focal length sorry what i am saying here longest cell of approximately length or approximately mainly 1 meter in length it can have one meter length okay the number the number yeah we can say neurons neuron never divides never divides so the number of neuron remain constant from birth to old age okay you understood understood yes sir understood okay now talking about this one talking about this one that this is the longest cell and uh, it never divides it has approximately length of 1 meter neurons uh, are fixed in number they carry the impulse from brain to spinal cord and spinal cord to brain and vice versa okay so have you noted this one no sir just good. and it is a functional unit of nervous system it is that you have already written it is the functional unit functional unit of nervous system okay sir which part of the cell connects all the nerve nerves together what what are you saying only like uh, for the uh, new uh, nerve this a uh, neuron like which part connects many neurons together which part form when when which... when many neuron uh, forms together no 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 like if one neuron is there and it get gets attached yeah, yeah. that is called synapse okay let let me explain you we are just going to explain this one okay so so if i talk about this one that talking about this neuron so when there are two neurons join together they form synapse okay let me explain you here that when we are having two neurons for example uh, let me let me show you the image of this one okay wait a minute
So when the two neurons meet together, they actually forms a junction that is called synapse or synapse. Okay. And the cell body, uh, we can say that the dendrites of the first one joins with the dendrites of other, another one. Let me explain you here that, for example, if I'm having this neuron, Okay, let's suppose this is a neuron and this neuron have some synaptic terminals here. So this neuron will get joined with the another one, with the previous one here. This is the nerve ending and they are joining here. Okay, we can see this one. Okay, so they, they form a junction here. And this is called, what we call it? Okay, so this, this is another neuron they're getting. So that's a nerve ending, nerve ending, nerve ending of the first one, uh, get joined with the, uh, means get attached, get attached, with with the dendrites dendrites of other one other one okay so if i talk about this one this is called synapse what we called it it is called synapse synapse is junction between two neurons junction junction between between two neurons okay you understood note it down Note it fast. Done? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Sir, but which part of the neuron connects the two neuron together? Which part of the neuron? Dendrites and synaptic terminals? So dendrite connects both of them together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dendrites and this portion are connecting together, okay? So this hair-like position is called dendrites. These are the dendrites, okay? The longest part is exon. This is the longest part. Have you drawn this one? This, I'm not sharing the screen, okay? So this is dendrite, this is finger-like, hair-like position. This is called dendrites. And this is the longest part of the cell that is called exon. And this is the synaptic terminal. Got it? They get joined together. Yes. Noted everybody? So dendrite received the message. It received the message. Received the message. Okay. And from dendrites, it reaches to the cell, cell uh, body and then to the exon and then finally to this one. Okay. Got it? And from where it received? It received the message from, from sense organ, okay? Sense organ, okay? Got it? Got it? Yes, sir, got it. Yes, sir. Let's move further. For example, if I'm having uh, another type of a neuron, okay, there are two types of neuron. One is motor neuron, motor neuron another one is sensory neuron 
मोटर न्यूरोन मोटर न्यूरोन कैरी द इम्पल्स कैरी इज मैसेज कैरी इज मैसेज फ्रॉम ब्रेन और स्पाइनल कार्ड टू मसल्स और इफेक्टर्स बट सेंसरी न्यूरोन कैरी इज मैसेज from sense organ sense organ such as skin nose the nose comma eyes etc to brain or spinal cord you understood understood yes sir understood note it note it down एंड प्लीज नोट दिस फॉलोइंग पार्ट ऑफ दिस पोर्शन सो नोट दिस वन ऑल्सो दिस इज हाईली स्पेशलाइज ड्यू टू द्यू टू विच एनिमल्स आर एबल टू प्रोवाइड एंड रिसीव एंड रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिमिनस stimulus what is a stimulus is a stimulus is anything through which uh, or to which our body responds actually okay so for example temperature is a stimulus for us because if we got very high temperature if we got in area which is very high having a very high temperature or very low temperature then we will feel start feeling hotness and coldness respectively so we can simply say that here that uh, that these neurons are responsible to uh that we are able to why we are able to respond to the temperature and how we are feeling cold because of this neuron because this neuro, new, neurons help us to stimulate this or to uh, means they are just sending the signals to the to the body that it is very hot uh, outside is very cold outside so accordingly we feel uh, we just feel to this stimulus okay but for example if you touch a hot plate then the sensory neuron will take the uh, message to the uh, sense organ to the brain or spinal cord and then brain or spinal cord will uh, give the message to the muscles and the muscles contract and then we will easily we can easily lift our hand or we can put uh, pull our hand backward okay so we are responding to the hot plate and this is done by with the help of this neuron because they, if they are if the neurons does not work then they will not carry the message and we will not be able to respond to the stimulus okay to so stimulus can be anything that can be a light it can be light it can be a uh, temperature it can be anything that we are responding if someone uh, pin you having a pin then it will we will respond to that one so that is that is all taken by these actions are taken by with the help of this neuron so these are highly specialized tissue because, due to which animals are able to perceive and respond to this stimulus they are functional Unit of nervous system that you have written cell body or cytan cell body is cytan covered with plasma membrane and this is and this this cell body cytan is going to have all membrane bounded organelles means all the membrane bounded organelles are present here okay got it you understood that like Golgi bodies endoplasmic reticulum ribosome these are all present here. in the cell body so this structure is going to have all the membrane bounded organelles and it is a true eukaryotic cell true eukaryotic karyotic cell why i am saying it is true eukaryotic cell uh, it is a true eukaryotic cell because it is going to have all membrane bounded organelles okay uh, we can say the short hair like projections uh, from the cytan cell body 
साइटन मीन्स सेल बॉडी ओके साइटन मीन्स सेल बॉडी ओके, सो प्लीज हर एक्सन एक्सन इज अ न्यूरॉन इज हाईली हाईली क्लोज और वी कैन से दैट वेरी क्लोजली पैक डेंड्रॉन ऑफ द न्यूरॉन एंड दिस कैरी द इम्पल्स दिस वी हैव रिटर्न टू दिस वन एंड दिस प्रोक्सिमिटी इज कॉल्ड प्लीज नोट इट डाउन नोट इट डाउन एक्सन मींस वी कैन से दैट वन पार्ट ऑफ द एक्सन्स आर वेरी क्लोजली पैक टू द डेंड्रॉन विथ अदर 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 न्यूरॉन and that is going to carry the impulse and that we call it synapse okay the synapse junction between two neuron is called synapse have you written that one the junction between two neuron is called synapse noted that one no sir i am writing noted So done. Done. Okay. So uh, let's move further. Now we are just going to study that is the uh, muscular tissue. Okay, and you know that the muscular tissue is the tissue that is. used uh, we can say that it is a muscle tissue that your body is going to have fibers or a flesh like a structure tissue okay and this tissue generally responsible for the contraction and relaxation and because of that we are our body is able to move we are uh, going to perform certain specific functions okay so this i can simply say here that the muscular tissue is very important and this help us in the movement of various body part in proper functioning of the body like for example heart is pumping the blood kidney is filtering the blood okay liver is doing uh, different different uh, activities that are taking place in our body there are cert certain voluntary actions such as certain involuntary actions so uh, so these are all controlled by or done by the muscular tissue the movements are brought about in the body note it down about the muscular tissue that movement are brought movement are brought about in the body with the help of muscular tissue they are long fiber like cells called muscles fibers okay these are capable of contraction and relaxation note it down Note it down. Third then. done okay now talking about this one there are the different different types of muscular tissue for example a tissue that is present in the muscles like here 
this is called muscular tissue uh this is the muscle and then next we have the cardiac tissue that is going to have like this structure and the other one is the smooth muscles or we called it non striated muscle non striated striated muscles okay and similarly we have this one uh that is called skeleton muscles or we called it uh the first one is skeleton muscle that is voluntary and that is also called striated muscle striated striated muscles okay and why we are calling it striated muscles and non striated muscles so just because because they are going to have some dark and like you see these are the bend some dark bends are present on this type of tissue that why that is that it, it is considered to be as striated muscles cardiac tissue also have have this striated bend but it is not going to have very dark striated bend uh, striated muscles so it has but it does not have very like in this one you can see the sing, uh, the lines like this structure but in this one you can't have this one uh, you don't see the lines as as dark in this one so it is intermediate we can say that it comes in the intermediate of striated and and non striated muscles and here you can see that in this one we don't have any striated striations like in the uh, smooth muscles and we don't have the dark uh, bends like we were having in the in this one okay so that's why it is called striated because it is going to have some stripes okay like uh, dark bends it is it is in between uh, striated and non striated cardiac one and this one is uh, we can simply say here that this is non striated muscles okay got it got it so first of all if i talk about this striated muscles or we called it we call it striated means that is going to have some stripes and it is also called is skeleton muscles okay is skeleton muscles okay and this is also called voluntary muscle why it is called voluntary because the actions performed by these by these muscles is in our control if i want to lift my hand it is in our control if i want to walk it is in my control so we can say that those functions that are done by skeleton muscles these are in our control so we can control this one because they are under the one's wills okay muscles fibers or we can say that cells are multinucleated you can say that uh, cells the, it is going to have multinucleated means they are uh, multinucleus are present you can see that here this is the nucleus so they are very nucleus multi it is multinucleated we can say simply here so it is multinucleated okay understood everyone and each fiber is enclosed with thin membrane called sarcolemma okay and the cytoplasm is called sarcoplasm so uh, this and this muscle get tired and need rest for example if you start working for some day for some time then these muscles get tired okay and we need to get rest okay got it okay so note these points please okay sir note these points striated muscles Sir, so done. Done. Done, everyone. Avni, Ramaisa, Abdul Jabbar. Yes, sir. Done. done. Okay. Let's you move further. This one is actually cardiac fibers. We can see that this is cardiac. cardiac muscles cardiac muscles is non striated muscles sorry it is it is in between striated and and you can see that it is branch like a structure you can see that it was having branch like a structure like this way okay and these are going to have some 
connections. For example, here one muscles can, uh, as you know, that the whole heart get contract and relax. So how it is possible the contraction relaxation is controlled? So I can simply say here that uh, this is controlled by a uh, specialized, specialized disc-like structure called intercalated disc. And these intercalated discs uh, are it means help help the cells to uh, have one cells to connect with another cells. Okay. So if I'm having this one cell of cardiac and this is another cell. So they can communicate with each other with the help of this intercalated disc. Okay, what do we call it? Intercalated disc. Okay, you understood? So for yes, example, sir. This, is, this you can see here that this is the strident. This is these are the intercalated disc. Okay, so they can communicate with each other. They can communicate with each other. So if I'm talking about this one, that cardiac fiber. Hello. Okay, so they are only uh, we can say that. Noted, noted. So we can say that they are only voluntary muscles. They are only voluntary muscles. They are found in the ball of heart. Okay. They are they are uh, involuntary muscles. Involuntary means they, their actions are not in our control. For example, for example, if you are taking something, uh, we can simply say that can you stop your heart by your will? It will continuously pumping the blood. So it is not in your will. So that is, it is called involuntary. It means that you can't control the action of heart. It is controlled. For example, if you see something suddenly and you got fright, frightened, okay, then your heartbeat increases. This will not in your, in your control. You cannot make it normal instantly. It will take some time to become normal. Okay. So that is, that is involuntary actions. Okay. And we can say that only found in the wall, wall of heart. This cardiac muscle is only found in the wall of heart and it is in between of striated and non striated muscles, neither it is, we can say that it is neither in, in striated nor it is perfectly uh, non striated. It is going to have some lighter bends, okay? And it is uninucleated branch, and branch are united by intercalated disc. This is important, okay? And these muscles rhythmic contraction relaxation throughout the life and never fatigue and never, never get tired. Okay, or never, never get fatigue. Not it. With the bar again, you turn off your camera. Done? Yes, sir. The next we are going to have that is non-strided muscles. The non-strided muscles are, are, we can say that these are the smooth muscles. Okay. And uh, we can say that these are the smooth, smooth muscles. And involuntary, we can say that it is involuntary muscles. Okay. Non-strided means it is also called smooth muscles. Smooth muscles. And the action of this one is not in our will. Okay, there are certain actions that takes place. For example, contractions of of uh, contraction relaxations of of uh, this esophagus. Okay, when we eat something, so it contracts and help help that thing that we eat to reach into the stomach. So it do a specialized peristaltic movement. Okay, that is called peristalsis. Or peristaltic movement here it is written. Okay. So this this is whole it is called elementary canal. This one and it helps in the peristaltic movement. Peristaltic movement. Okay. So let me explain you this one. Wait a minute. 
And what is prostatic moment? So you can see here. Okay. Other so if you eat like some food, so that food reaches to our st stomach with the help of some this this like structures. Okay. When the food reaches to this portion, okay. So when the food reaches to this portion, so it will pushing like this. Okay, when the food reaches to this portion, then this portion will become like this. Okay, and when the food reaches to this portion, then the food will reach. So it is just these are the specialized movements that are done by this uh, uh, esophagus or elementary canal. Elementary canal is start from mouth. It includes small intestine, large intestine. So actually, this pipe that is taking the food and it is connecting to this stomach here, like this. Okay. So it is connecting to the stomach. So this here, it, it is showing the prostatic moment. Okay. So it is involuntary action. It is not controlled by in our will. And there are certain actions also that is taking place. For example, filtration of blood by kidney. So it is not in our control. So there are different, different types of uh, cells or we can say that specialized tissue that is not in our control. Okay. You understood? That is not in our control and they are we can simply say that they are controlled uh, they are involuntary action and they are controlled by smooth muscles okay you understood understood everyone yes so these are these are not in our control so if you note it down that uh, here okay so if you note it down here that that these are the non striated smooth muscles. These are involuntary. Involuntary means they, their actions are not in our will. They are uninucleated. They are also uninucleated. And it's spindle in shape. And the shape is spindle-like. What is a spindle? Do you know what is a spindle? A spindle is a specialized uh, structure or we can say have a wooden like a wooden piece which is used for weaving clothes Okay, uh, in the machinery. So this is a spindle shape, spindle-like shape like this. Okay, so and uninucleated, and we can say that they are enclosed by a membrane like fibroblast -like structures, which are joined together in, in a bundle shape. Okay, so don't write this point, this is not necessary. Such and note the another point that such muscles are found in the wall of the stomach, small intestine, urinary bladder, bronchies, bronchi, bronchi is lungs. Okay, lungs, you know, the when you inhale or exhale the oxygen, so these their contraction relaxations of uh of these uh, bubbles or balloon like a structure okay this is done by a specialized cell that is called that is also made up of smooth muscles okay so we can say that it is present in the stomach small intestine or intestine urinary bladder so when when we have to go to urine so we cannot control it for a long time because uh, that is involuntary and you cannot control that one okay similarly iris for example iris iris of eye if i'm talking about iris of eye so in the iris of eye what is iris actually iris is is this colorful part of eye we have this colorful part of eye like this is the that is red color green color sorry red not red uh, black color brown color so this is the iris this is the this is the eye okay so you as you know very well that if you if you go into the dark room Okay, then, uh, then you can you can do this experiment by using mirror also. For example, if you are 
if you, for example, if you are having a torch, not very high intensity, okay, just have a torch and try to look at that torch. Okay, then you will and then uh, suddenly remove the torch and look and look your eye into into your into the mirror. Then you will see that the the, the size of the pupil, that a black spot will become will become smaller. Okay, and then go into the dark room, go into a dark room where there is no light. Okay, and then try to see something. Okay, and uh, then after some time, then suddenly come into the light and then then see your pupil into the uh, uh, into the mirror. Okay, and see your eye into the mirror, then you will see that your pupil size will become larger. That the black spot will become larger in size. So this this size of that black spot is controlled by iris. Iris that this portion, this portion of eye, this is going to control this this iris. Okay, so that brown color portion that we have different different person is going to have different different colors eyes. Someone have brown, someone have blue, someone have black. Okay, so almost uh, so we can say that this colored portion this is called iris iris and this this is going to control the uh, size of this black spot of this black spot of eye okay you understood so what is happening here that if we go into the dark room then there is a low intensity of light is there then there is low intensity of light and if we are having the low intensity of light then what is going to happen we are not able to see something so this size of the pupil will increase so that more light can go into this, into the eye and we can see the things clearly. And you know, you are very much familiar. For example, if you suddenly go, for example, if you are sleeping and suddenly someone and you wake up in the dark room and suddenly turn on the lights, a, a person came into your room and suddenly turn on the lights, you just start doing like this. You are not able to see things clearly because why? You feel uncomfortable because during that time, the size of the pupil was very large because you were in the dark part portion. And when suddenly some person turn on light, then the more intensity of light is going in, in, into your eyes. Okay. And for some, it will take some time for iris to, to decrease the size of your pupil. So when the size of the pupil decreases, then in the, in the light room, then uh, less amount of light, light will enter into, into your eyes. And then you will able to see things clearly. Okay. So these are the involuntary actions that are not being controlled by us. That are involuntary. You cannot control the size of your people. It is not in your in your in your control. Uh, okay, so we can say that this this is controlled by iris, uh, smooth muscles. Okay, so these are some in, uh, involuntary actions that are controlled by iris. So note it down, please. Note it down. Skeleton, uh, sorry, non-striated muscles. Don't write this point. Done? No, sir, so it's still doing it.
So done. Done. Okay. Okay. So let's have some question on this one. Abdul Jabbar, have you done? Yes, sir. What is the function of nervous tissue? Will you be able to do this one question? Is, is, uh, and state the main features of muscular tissue. Will you be able to do this one? Yes, sir. We have written this one. Okay. Describe the structure of neuron with the well level diagram. Will you be able to do this one? Hmm? This is very important question. So many times this question has been asked. Okay, sir. Give a summarized cl classification of animal tissue. We have given this one. Uh, noted it. You have noted this one in, in, the, in your copy. And mention the role of pen, comma, colon, comma, and sclen, comma. We have also done this one. Okay, what is tissue? Meristematic tissue. We have also done this one. Okay. The small and branched process of nerve neuron is called a small and branched process of neuron or nerve cell is called dendrite axons or what, what is called? Let me please tell me. Uh, the, dendrites. Dendrites. Okay. The brain and spinal cords are made up of neurons. Okay. Neurons. The spindle is spindle or we can say that uh, the spindle shape non striated involuntary fibers. That is Treated muscle fibers. Non striated involuntary muscle fibers are like you know, is called. Which one it is? Striated muscle fiber. No, it is smooth muscles. You are talking about the, you have written this one recently in your copy. The smooth muscles are involuntary, no? Yeah. The skeleton muscles are striated. Now remaining we are having, we have not studied blood and uh, some parts of connective tissue. So we will study this one, okay, in the next class. The special property of muscle fiber to contract fully and return to its original is, uh, state is called flexibility, contractibility or flexibility? Flexibility. Yeah. And if I... And what, what is responsible? The proteins are responsible, okay? Proteins are responsible for the contraction and relaxations of muscles, okay? And these proteins are called X, actin and myosin, okay? Actin and myosin and myosin are the two proteins that are responsible for this type of activities, okay? You understood? Which plant tissue remain inactive in the metabolic state always? Which plant tissue remain in active metabolic state? In uh, pa parenchyma. Yes. Okay. 